Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So about six months ago I was in Bali, Indonesia and I completed my first ever scuba dive and also got my first little qualification to do the scuba diving as well. So today I just thought I'd share with you how it went, the process and everything you need to know before your first scuba dive. Now I'm not going to sit here and say it was 100% easy, like every sport there's things that you need to learn and things to remember, so I'm going to share all of that with you in today's video. On the day I actually did take my camera with me and do some filming and I also had an underwater camera so someone else filmed me while we were actually diving in the ocean. So I'm going to be integrating that footage throughout this video just to make it a bit more fun and also so when I'm explaining things you get to see the process as well. So I'm going to stop rambling now and let's get started. So if you don't already know, there is a company called Paddy and they are probably the most famous and the most well known for people who want to achieve some qualifications with scuba diving. And in the Paddy universe there are seven levels of qualifications for recreational divers. So I thought I'd just start by talking you through those levels. So here is actually my certificate, just so you can see what I got, I'm just covering the signatures at the bottom. Um, so it says certificate of recognition and the date that I did it and it's congratulations for your introduction to diving or your baptism dive. So it can be called like an introduction to diving, an intro dive or like a baptism dive. So that's what I've got and here's my my boyfriend as well because we did it together. So that was so much fun and we are definitely going to be doing our next level which is open water. So open water is kind of the first proper big qualification and it's the one where you can then sort of think about yourself as a scuba diver. You've achieved the first big goal and you have the open water certificate which lets you go to 18 metres. So I've just got my phone here just so I can talk you through the seven levels and make sure I don't miss anything out. So as I said there's um, discover, then there's open water, specialty diver, advanced open water, rescue diver, dive master and then you can do the big IDC if you choose. And actually only about 2% of recreational divers actually make it to the dive master because a lot of people just want to get a few qualifications under their belts, so they can dive on their own but aren't really interested about getting all the way to the top and like teaching dive or becoming like an examiner or anything. It's worth mentioning when you do the specialty diver that's when you're able to specialise in a different thing. So you can specialise in underwater navigation, deep diving, recovery and most of them can be completed in about one or two days. So as you can tell, out of all those qualifications, the little ones that we have are very, very small at the bottom, but it was my first ever dive, so I'm glad that it went well and I managed to get a qualification out of it. My boyfriend's granddad is also the very top level of scuba diving, so he's completed dive master and he's now IDC, which basically means he can examine. So I FaceTimed him just before this video, just to make sure that I was saying everything right, and also just to see if he had any tips for you guys. So right at the end, I'm gonna be sharing some tips from someone as well who's really, really experienced, as well as my experience, as a beginner. So now I thought I'd talk you through the process of how the day went and everything that we did. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of footage that I took when I was in Bali before I went out for my first ever dive. So I'm just borrowing Doug's phone just to show you where we're going. So we are currently at the Blue Dot. We're near uh, Denpasar. We are down uh, in Sanor and we're going all the way over here to Talamben, right where that red mark is. <laughs> training and then you can literally see the sea is right there so we head down those steps there and then we go to the sea to do our dive. So as you saw there was my training pool and I chose the course where you're able to train in the pool first and then go in the sea. So my course was $120 but with that was included the training in the pool, uh, a dive, free lunch, and then another dive. So I actually got quite a lot for my money. Also, as you saw, there was a van that picked us up and took us all the way to the location and then was there to take us home as well. I didn't have to worry about any equipment, literally anything. So for me, I thought $120 was really, really good. I can link the one where I went down below if anyone's interested in doing it in Bali. So talking about the process, once I actually got into the pool, first things first, he just gave us a little introduction just about what things were and the name for things and also talked us through the signs so I'm going to talk you through the signs so okay is this now that can be a little bit confusing because people always want to think that this is okay if people say you know are you okay people want to do this but this means something completely different so this actually means go up so you want to be careful doing the thumbs up which is what I did I'll show you the clip now but so I did something absolutely fine the art I was and I was like oh 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 <laughs> so 
yeah. <laughs> the next one is problem. So this is where you just shake your hands, problem. And you can say, if he asks you if you are okay and you say problem, you can then say problem with is, problem with mask and you can point to whatever the problem area is but this means problem then like I said this means go up so this is to go up and obviously reverse this is to go down so yeah those are a few signs that you'll definitely need to know if you're into a dive and definitely if you're open water as well so once you are in the training pool there are three exercises that need to be completed number one is how to empty water out of your mask number two is how to take off your um, regulator put it on and off and number three is learning how to inflate and deflate your bcd so when might that be useful of course at any time water can go into your mask and it can be really really annoying it happened to me on my first dive of the day i had a bit of water in there and luckily because i'd learned what to do i wasn't able to sort it out and then see again because otherwise it could just be such a pain having water in your mask second one um learning about your regulator just because with the flippers anything can happen someone could accidentally knock off your regulator you could accidentally knock it off my boyfriend's granddad was also saying you know some people like to take it off for pictures because then you don't have something massive in front of your face so it was really useful to learn that one and it can also really save your life if anything dangerous was to happen now obviously i'm not going to go into too much detail about the training and what it actually entails and what you need to do because i'm not a dive master so you'll learn those things obviously on the course but i did just want to briefly mention what those training things are and why they're useful then what was also mentioned to us was just about equalising our ears because unfortunately you can get ear damage from not clearing them out properly when you are scuba diving so that's something really important to know how to do. If you're listening to those training things now and you're thinking gosh that sounds like a lot I promise you it wasn't. We completed our training in just 15 minutes and then we were straight into the sea. It really sounds like a lot to learn but it's really not. You know for me I was with my boyfriend so then we had an instructor each so there was four of us there you know I felt confident at all times but for some people you might struggle and I think it's just so important not to panic. So once all that was completed I was able to go into the ocean and what an amazing time I had. Um, so we did one dive, came and had some lunch and then had a second dive. So I'll play you the footage of me diving now. Unfortunately I don't have a GoPro, I don't have an amazing camera. What I did have did take some good footage but obviously it wasn't maybe as clear as it could be. But also I didn't want to go out and buy a massive GoPro and then absolutely hate underwater diving and never want to use the GoPro ever again. So my sister kindly bought me that little underwater camera. I can leave a link below if you want just because it was it's just a cheap alternative. Um, but now that I no, I love diving, I'm gonna invest in a GoPro and get some amazing underwater footage. But this is just to show you the footage I did have and how the diving went. dived in a shipwreck so as well as there being sort of aquatic life and things to see there was also a shipwreck which was amazing and also as you could see he was able to let me go at times when I was more confident and um but then he did have hold of me other times and I took some fun little videos with Doug you know us holding hands and things so yeah it was absolutely amazing so now I'm gonna just share with you some of the tips So my first tip, I would be really careful when choosing your uh, place to scuba dive because there are circumstances of some companies that will take maybe a bit less, maybe 80 to to $100, but they'll literally put you in front of the sea, maybe tell you one or two things and then literally chuck you in the sea and just hold you for the whole dive. And if something goes wrong, there's no time to say, oh, you know, I'm struggling with my breathing or I can't get this right or that right because you're already in the sea, time sticking, and then they take your money and that's it. Whereas for me... I was so happy and it made me feel so much more confident being able to go in the training pool first because you know there's a ground underneath you, you're in a pool, you're able to see better 
and you can always come up at any time and talk about things. Sometimes it is worth to pay a little bit more and then you'll get more included in the package rather than just being put out into the ocean and just being held for the whole time. But if that's what you choose to do, that is absolutely fine. But just personally for me, I was much happier being able to do it in a training pool first. Like I said, I will leave the one that I did linked below just in case any of you are interested in doing diving in Bali. Number two is to trust the instructor. And like I said, if I hadn't have trusted my instructor, it could have really easily led to panic, me not thinking I can do it and me completely missing out on the day. They know what they're talking about. So it's always best just if you have to put your faith in them. Number three is to breathe calmly. Now this one might seem really obvious, but like I said, pe different people don't struggle with different things. But for some people, you might think you have it down, but when you get underwater, it's a really strange experience. You know, you don't have control of everything because you've got a massive tank on your back and a regulator in your mouth. Do whatever works for you to make you breathe calmly. If it's to use your hands to remind yourself, that's fine. If you want to count breaths in your head, whatever is going to help you, I think that's just really, really important. My number four tip is just to respect the aquatic life. Be careful with your fins because there's coral around and there's fish everywhere and that's their world, you know. We've, we're going into their world and we're so lucky that we're able to see the amazing things that we can by diving. But be careful with your fins, you know. Don't break any coral. Obviously, when you're new, things are difficult, things happen. But I think it's just really important to, you know, respect the aquatic life. And my last and final tip, tip number five, is just to voice any problems that you do have. I think it's really easy to be scared when things go wrong. Don't be worried about what your instructor is going to think. It's their job to teach you. It's their job to help you and find any problems. If your vest doesn't feel tight enough or too tight, if your oxygen tank is uncomfortable, all these things are really important. And I'm sure if any instructors do watch this, they will agree that it's just utmost important that you trust them and you let them know if there are any issues. I just wanted to say a really quick thank you to my boyfriend's granddad for helping me film this video. So, but he's French, so I'm going to quickly say it in French. Merci papi de m'avoir emmené plonger à Bali et merci de ton aide pour cette vidéo. Okay guys, I think that is where I will leave today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it informative and if any of you are preparing for a dive, I hope that you found it interesting and that it taught you what you can expect. If you're preparing for a dive or you've been diving, let me know in the comment section. I love to hear from you guys. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button so you can catch the rest of my videos and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.